so I have it. Let's just start with the easy stuff. Just your name and who you are and where you're at and because of your lovely accent, where you're from. <laughs> um, darling Knight, I'm at home in Cairo, Michigan. I am originally from Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, but I've lived all over. I've lived in Idaho, California, and North Carolina, Michigan. What else? You said you had a previous military background? I was a Marine. Yeah? Mm-hmm. How long? <laughs> Two years. Okay. Um, so, basically, how, how long was the road to, uh, from North Carolina to Carroll, Michigan? Um, I'm not sure how you mean that. Um, I joined the Marine, the Marine Corps when I was 19. No, was I 19 or was I 20? I joined it in 88, so I was 20. Um, and then they sent me out to California, then ended up in Idaho, went back to North Carolina, and then in, yes, I'm nervous. Can you see me wrapping this? Um, then I, met him online in 2000 and we talked for a month month and a half and then we met and yes he embarrassed me crazily on that and we saw each other a lot over that summer and then he moved up here and the next march i moved up here so it was I guess you could say I knew him for a year and, no, not quite a year, and I moved up here to be with him. One of the things that he had mentioned is you were learning about all this lifestyle mm -hmm. and everything. What was kind of your original? I got a hold of the Korean books, the books by John Norman, Norman, right? Um, and I'd read them, read quite a few of them. Um, I've always been the type of person who, um, needed a strong male in my life. And I would get with a strong male, and after a while, they would not be as strong. They would become someone who would um, want me to do things. I'd only been with one other male who stayed strong. And that one didn't work out for various reasons. But the other males didn't stay strong. They wimped out or weak weakened and they wanted me to be the strong person. And I'm not that type of person. I, I'm not a controlling person, okay? I'm not the one who stays in control. Um, I like for the male to be the one. I've always wanted a 50s relationship, okay? The, the type that the woman knows who she is, the male knows who he is, and their roles don't mix, okay? That's just how life is. I was born in the wrong era, just basically. And reading those books, it's like, this is who I am. This is, this feels normal. This feels right. So I got online. I started looking at everything I could find that had to do with that. And then that led me towards DS, BDSM. And I'm reading all this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. You know, this is, uh, there are really people who do this. There are really people who think this way. And then I started seeing other things. I'm like, oh God, you know, some people, can this really happen? Does this really happen? And it scared me. So I'm like, okay, I gotta find a real person. You know, I gotta find something. So I started looking through ads, just, you know, finding, just playing around. And I found his ad. And I was, I wrote, wrote to him, it just said, all the ad said was, I know, it, know about certain things about masters and slaves if you if you have any questions write me I, w I will answer all um, emails so I wrote him an email I wasn't looking for a relationship I wasn't looking for anything just answers to my questions and I wrote it and I got an email response back and from then on I mean we wrote and talked most every day two or three times a day and um, I was afraid he was gonna think I was stalking him no, I wasn't. I was just overly curious about all of this because when I get something that piques my interest, I, I'm one who goes after it. it. It really 
I become almost obsessive to where I want to know everything I can know about it. And um, he answered my questions. And then we got to meet and talk about it and everything like that. You talked about that need for that traditional kind of, do you call it the 50s relationship? 50s, 1800s, you know, uh, the man's the man, the woman's the woman. That's how it is. Where, how did you come to this realization when you were younger? I mean, how did, how did you know this, this feeling? It's just how I've always been. You know, I had a strong, I felt he was a very strong male father. And I had a mom who was a stay-at-home mom most of my childhood. And then they split. And then my dad, my mom gave us up to my father, you know, and then my father remarried. And then my stepmother was a very controlling woman, very controlling. She controlled everything in the household. She controlled the um, my father. She controlled the money. She controlled everything. And to me, that just wasn't normal. That wasn't how it was supposed to be. It didn't fit right. It didn't feel right. It didn't didn't mesh, if you understand what I mean. And so I saw both sides. I saw how that was, even though that marriage didn't work. It, that's how I feel a relationship should be. And then I saw that one, and it was like, neither one seemed happy, even though they stayed together. Neither one seemed happy. One of the things he brought up is that, you know, a, a submissive is not a lesser. What's sort of your thoughts on, on being the submissive and in that role? About not being lesser? Well, not only that, but trying to explain that to people. Um, I have a brain. I have a pretty good brain. Um, I have thoughts in my mind. I have wants, I have needs. And to be perfectly honest, a submissive has to be smart. They have to, to get what they want. They have to, they have to know that they can't complain, they can't whine, they can't do certain things to make the dom, master, whomever mad or angry. Because sometimes <laughs> the dom or the master can be bullheaded and stand there and it's their way and they're going to have their way sometimes and if you present it to them I want this and they don't want it then they're going to say I don't want it if you present it to them in a different way just like with children if children present something to their parent in a different way if they stand there kick their feet and scream that they want this, they want this, they're going to say no. If your children come to you in a different way, if they present it in a good way and in the proper way, they'll get it. If a submissive presents things in a proper way, if they're smart enough to know how to present things to their dom or their master, then they will usually end up getting it if it's the proper thing for the family, for the household. So a submissive has to be smart. They have to understand how life works in their household. If, you're, if a submissive isn't smart, if a submissive doesn't think of themselves as equal, then they're just going to lay there and be a doormat. They're not going to have anything. They have to understand how life works. Does that make sense? Sure. I mean, it makes sense to me through the discussion. I was just looking at it from the aspect of, you know, you had been in, in other relationships not like this one. Mm -hmm. How does that compare to this? What are some of the differences between the two? Um, in other relationships, when I got mad, I yelled, I screamed, I got into huge fights. Um, I think I actually pushed one of my husbands. I um, 
cursed. I had a huge temper. My mother-in-law now doesn't think that I know how to raise my voice. Um, I don't raise my voice to my master. I, but he knows when I'm upset. He knows when I'm angry. And he knows when I'm not happy. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to sneeze. <laughs> he knows when I'm not happy with what's going on. But I don't lose my temper with him. I don't, well, I do get upset. But I don't, I've slammed the door a couple of times. And I've been told that's not allowed. So I don't do it when he's around. Um, there are things that I will do to release my temper when he's not around. There are th different things that I do to release my temper when he is around. I do a lot of cleaning when he's around to release my temper. Um, you just learn different ways. Um, and it's helped me to understand me better. Because that's one of the things I was going to ask. You know, if you can't, a lot of people are like, ah, I get to, you know, scream it out or get it out that way. At first, I didn't think there was anything I could do. And he's the type, when he's angry, when he is angry, he walks away. And I'm like, when we first got together, huh, whoa, that's not happening. And I followed him. And he's like, excuse me, don't follow me unless you want to hear things you don't want to hear. I'm like, but, but, but I don't understand. And then slowly I learned to understand. It's, it's the same getting to know each other, period, and with any type of relationship. And then finally I got to the point, I said, okay, I need that same cooling off thing. May I, if I'm angry, walk away? Well, yeah. Do I have, I have to ask permission to leave a room if we're both in the same room. And if I'm that angry or I'm that upset, out of spite, I'm not going to want to ask to leave the room. I'm not going to want to. Well, I asked him, do I have to have permission to leave the room when I'm angry? He's like, no, you don't. Okay, thank you. So it's more of when you're angry, you can't communicate and talk and make compensation, not compensation, but not compromise, not, you can't come to terms with certain things. You wait until you're both cooled off, then, then you ask, you ask questions. You ask for clarification on what is allowed, what isn't allowed. You know, I can't drive off when I'm mad. That's dangerous, that's unsafe. I can walk outside. I can do things like that. And then when we're cooled off, then things get talked about. Then I understand. He understands. We, we learn. Nothing is discussed in anger. That's how it differs from my other relationships. In my other relationships, there wasn't that talking about, period. There wasn't that control. Neither partner had that control because there was always, oh, no, 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 I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and no one would understand the other one to where it would stop and mean things would be said, and once something's said, it can't be taken back, and then you're hurt, and then it, you're slowly pulled apart, and then it's over. I remember, you know, the, the things on TV and this and that and the other of, oh, a dominatrix and this and that and the other, but it didn't click. You know, I never really paid any attention to it. And then after I, after I started talking to him, I see all these little signs, you know, like this guy comes into this place that I'm working. I was working as a, as a uh, cashier somewhere as my second job, single mom, two jobs. He had on this shirt with this gag in this woman's mouth and it said shut up and a word for a female 
And I'm like, oh, I know what that means. You know, I know what that stands for. And you know, then, then all of a sudden I'll see all these little sign things that I never realized actually that I had seen and not seen before until I realized, do you understand? Kind of an open secret. Yeah, it is. You don't see it if you don't know it's there. And then all of a sudden when you know it's there, you see all of this stuff. Like these little collars people wear. You know, the, the studded things that, that girls have around their necks. How I bet half of these girls that wear these don't know what they stand for and they're wearing them. And people walk by, I'm going, hmm, I wonder, are they in the lifestyle? And then the girls that do wear them, they are in the lifestyle, are wearing them because they're owned. And that's just their way of being able to wear a collar out in public. You were talking about the, the keychain thing. Or yeah. The necklace. I mean, just kind of explain that story. Um, I have a friend who saw my keychain, and um, they asked me. They said they had a question to ask me. And I'm like, well, what is it? I, I thought they were talking about something else, and they told me it was about the keychain. I'm like, um, is it pertaining to what I think it's pertaining to? And they said, well, maybe. Can you come by and see me later? And I'm like, well, yeah, I can come by and see you later. So I went to see this person, and this person says, um, does your keychain mean what I think it means? I'm like, I'm not sure does it what do you think it means and he says well um i said hold on let me draw this symbol i tried to draw the symbol i couldn't draw it right i'm not a good drawer i didn't have my necklace on that day and so he says well let me draw it and he drew it and i said yes and um he says well which are you and i said i'm a submissive and he's like damn it he's i said why he says, well, I'm looking for a good dame. Do you know any? Because he, he can't find a good dame. And so, you know, we talk about the lifestyle now, all this good stuff. stuff so uh, it's, it's just little things people see that know about the lifestyle. They, it helps them know that you're in it, and then you can make a connection. So it's really cool. Because cause there's, there's obviously there's a symbolism, there's a, there's a lingo aspect. Mm -hmm certain words that have now creeped into your discussion that maybe yes. meant something before. Yes, because uh, we'll see each other and somebody will make a comment like, I'm going to just beat you, and this person will just grin at me. <laughs> the, um, kind of one of the big misconceptions you think most people have, like if you have you talked to, you know, like girlfriends you had or friends you had, you know, before this and you got into this and Thinking, you know, kind of what's yeah. Their, what's their kind of that I'm being abused. That um, I'm being stupid. That I'm letting someone control my life. That I have no control over anything. That um, I'm being used. That that I'm playing a game. That. Um, well, I know you can't do that, but you know, you really should talk to him about this. Um, and it's like, I can talk to him about that. I can do this, I can do that. All I have to do is open my mouth. We live a normal lifestyle for us. You know? A few people at work know what I am, who I am, um, but the ones that do know are trusted and it's it's cool they a couple of them are curious really curious about it but they're just really scared you know to go any further um, one of them two of them's husbands would love to have them in on it but um, they're just too scared <laughs> but it's 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 interesting they they just their misconception is that I'm being abused, and, and I, they worry about that. Yeah, just that it would go too far, that I, it's just friends looking out for friends, and, and I just have to tell them, no, it's my choice, and that I wouldn't be in any type of abusive relationship.